All right. So welcome to Ungovernable Racing Network. Um, I'm Reed, a.k.a. Papa Biscuit. I am Dango Leg, a.k.a. Steve. I am Swamp Donkey, a.k.a. John, and I-85 South Champ. Thanks to Greenville. And uh, we got a special guest with us today. We got pro late model driver of the I Heart Mac and Cheese car. We got Chase Spradlin. So tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Guys, I'm Chase Spradlin, and I am the driver of the I Heart Mac and Cheese number 89 pro late model. So tell us a bit about how you got started in racing. I got started in go-karts from the family. My dad was racing before before me and then just kind of followed up with it. I mean, when I got of age around eight years old, he put me in a go-kart, started out racing tight to short track on dirt and coming through the ranks of that. And about 14, I went into stock cars, which would be mini mods. I raced them for, and I bet 10 years, went to street stocks and then I started in late model racing. And coming through late models have been a lot more tough than most would imagine for the money it takes to run them but got hooked up with bobby roos getting the pro late model ride of i heart mac and cheese and that has been a game changer for me getting me keeping me into the bigger races and letting me get a little more feel of the bigger ranks you want to get the next one steve yeah i'll get it um so speaking of bobby What's it like working with Bobby and Roger and uh, being around Augie Grill and guys like that? I mean, that's got to be pretty uh, pretty cool, hanging out with those guys all the time. Man, it's super cool, man. Bobby and Roger got so much fun filled, man. They're just – all the time they're fun about everything. They, they make everything enjoyable to be around. It's fun at the track to be with them. They do everything they can for you. They take care of you at the track, uh, in the shop. It doesn't matter, man. They take care of you in every way. Uh, I've enjoyed being around every aspect of them. Uh, we've been, Augie has, uh, has got on my tail several times about what I've done wrong. Uh, I ain't gonna lie there. That's, I've learned that I've done several things wrong in racing through my years of racing. He's taught me different ways and that's, he's helped me to get me back around to the right track of things, man. So I, I'm blessed to have Bob and Roger, Augie, uh, Chris Mitchell, my crew chief, man, he's been a huge help coming on board with us. Uh, and then, you know, Bob and Roger also bring along Without without them being on board, I wouldn't have the help that I have at the track because I don't have many people that come with me to the track anymore. It's, it's Bob and Roger put people in places to help us get to the track, and without them, and it, it takes a full team effort nowadays. It ain't you need you need minimum five guys, and you really need five guys that know what they're doing all around on the car. So it helps a lot having them behind me in general. Um, what are some late model races you dream of racing in one day? Man, I'd like to go to the Winchester, man. That track looks super fast and cool. Uh, I'd like to try that out if I ever get a chance to. I'd love to. Uh, the Bristol race, if they keep doing it, I'd love to go try that out just so I can say I run the NASCAR tracks in. That'd be a fun one to, be a fun one to attempt. I haven't got to do anything like that before. Uh, so I'd enjoy it if I ever get the chance to to do it. But, you know, we, we kind of go race by race, to be honest with you. If, you know, if I can, we can keep the car one piece, and if we can feel like we've made gains, then we try to go to the next race. Which we've been struggling a little bit. I mean, it's just been kind of obvious the past year, so we've struggled trying to get the speed that it takes to get up with them frontier teams, man. And in front couple, you know, what what I call who finishes top three, top three now is a team driven car. It's not. They are good drivers in them cars. I'm not saying they're not, but they're they're fully backed by a team. And that's what it takes, man. It takes a good team of knowledge around you to help to help you get up to where you are nowadays. Because driver can only do so much. I, I call it. 85% car and 15% driver, you know, late model racing. Cause there's not much, you can, you can do a little bit to help out, but you can only do so much. So for 2023, what are your plans? Is it going to be just pro late models? Maybe some super, what do you got planned? So just pro late model racing as of now, you know, the super got tore up last year at all American 400. Uh, Augie was driving it and just got into a mishap. I think someone missed a shift on the restart and he got up in some else's trouble, mm -hmm. but um, that car got tore up pretty good. It hasn't been fixed yet. Uh, so for sure right now as a pro lap model racing is on the table uh, for us. Well, we're going to start with Alabama 200 and hopefully we have a 
great finish there. And then if we have a great finish, that'll propel us, you know, to the next race. You know, we don't we don't really have a set schedule so far. We'd like to run all of, all of Montgomery races if we could. Um, but as far as now, we want to start with All American 400 if we can. And then, you know, I think Ryan Roos is coming up this year in, a, in another mac and cheese car. He'll be probably on a race, and you'll see him de- debut at the Alabama 200. Uh, you've probably seen him in the sportsman class at Montgomery running that one mm-hmm. hour mac and cheese car. So he's he's debuting this race, too, so we look forward to that, man, getting him a lot of knowledge and seeing whatever we can help him. And, and then we'll probably just take it, you know, race by race, to be honest with you. Steve? Um, you know, speaking of different tracks, um, what would be the one track that you just want to take off your bucket list, like the, the one track? Like any track you could think of, I my personal would be like the 2004 NASCAR game Dodge Stadium. That's just my personal. Take off the list as far as racing and winning it, or just participating in it. Just participating. So my dad has ran Talladega uh, three times or so, and he's ran Michigan and Atlanta in ARCA cars. So if I could go to Michigan when I you know. I'm not a big eye racer, but when I do eye race, I kind of really enjoy Michigan. So if I could go there, I'd probably have the most fun there. I'm a short track racer at heart, don't get me wrong, but Michigan does something to me. And I, I really like what a car feels getting around on the games. So if I think if I could go up there, I would believe that I could do some, some good there. All right, so if you could race in any era of NASCAR, in any car, what era would it be and why? Oh, give me the 80s, man, like 87s, Monte Carlos. Back when you see them cars really just wall all over the track. It, You know, back what I just called 85% car and 50% driver, I mean, I felt like it was maybe, I don't really know, but maybe 50-50, you know. It just, it felt like someone like the Dale Earnhardt's and, you know, you know, the Rusty Wallace's, Darrell Waltrips, you know, they could they could get up on the wheel and make something happen. Them cars, a lot, if, they look like the most fun to drive. They just, they really do that. I compare it back to street stocks. I've ran street stocks, and that's that's what type that car is. And I'm sure that's nothing comparable to a NASCAR car back in the days. But I have some of the most fun running the street stocks. Man, they're just you just get up on the wheel, you hustle it, and the car's never really in the track, but it's all over the track, and you just make the best of it. So Bobby Roos and Roger Roos, they've done some truck racing here not too long ago. Do um, you think that's something that you could be doing here soon? Man, I'd love to. Uh, that's all in Bob and Roger's hands. That's the deal they got with Jordan Anderson. Uh, yeah, that'd be super cool, man. If I could, if I could ever get that chance to drive one of their cars with our heart mac and cheese, man, and and be repping that up in that ranks, you know, that would be super cool to me. That would be on my bucket list. If I could ever get to that rank of just making one start, I mean, it, even if you know, as long as I could finish once I started, I'd be so happy, man. It just, it would be super cool to me. Bob and Roger, they've had a blast doing it. They love to race, man, and that, that's probably the most coolest thing racing for them is their, their passion to go racing is what keeps the sport alive. It's people like them. Speaking of Anderson, he's put a lot of uh, good super speedway trucks out there the past couple of years. He's done very well at Daytona, very well at Talladega. But uh, my next question for you, do you have a rival I see that smile, so I'm pretty no, sure that's a yes. Currently, no. And honestly, you know, I just haven't, I haven't had any mishaps with somebody so far. You know, the, you know, rivals come in any race, though. You know, it could be the next race you go to, you end up, and the crazy thing about rivals are is you end up getting into them, and the next race you don't really mean to, but you're around that same person, and you have something happen to them. You're not even trying. You're not even trying to get into them, but you know, it looks like it on camera, so everyone just goes into it saying you meant to do it or or that's why it happened. It's just like they're a magnet from then on. You can't really get away from them. Uh, but currently, no. Not, I don't know if that's thankfully or not, but uh, currently, no. I, I'm pretty well easy flow, and I get along with most people right now. You know, and I haven't had to, any mishaps with people for the most part for right now. Like I said, I can change the next race, so I, and I hope not to a point. But if it, you know, if it takes it to win, you know, I, I'm all for it in the same sentence. Are there any other disciplines out there besides late models and stock cars that you would be interested in to drive one day if given the opportunity? 
So late model stock cars, as in, uh, so we're gonna roll out Craftsman trucks because that's probably the most fun, fun things I think I could go do. So I, I would definitely say that I'd like to go try that at that level. But I just, I kind of know the money it takes to go to that rank, and that's really not in my deck of cards unless someone backs us up to that. Uh, backs me and puts me in a seat to fill. Uh, I would, outside of that, I'd like to go do some dirt racing. I think dirt racing helps you build your skill set. And, and more races you can do, the better skill set you develop, and it gives you a better, what I call ass feel. You know, it gives you, the better your butt can fill a car, is the better you can drive it. You know, it just, I really do. So the, I think that dirt feel, that, that yawed out, really helps. So, and Bob Pollard, I think, proved that not too, not too many years ago when he started going dirt racing. I don't know a whole lot about it, but I feel like he came back super strong right after that. And it could be some, could be have something to do with it. It might have nothing to do with it, but it looked good and nothing, nothing else. Well, I don't know about Steve and John, but I don't have any other questions that I have written I'll down or planned. I've got one more. So I'll I'll you hold up. All right, Chase. If there is any current Cup Series driver that you could compare your driving style, your attitude, and everything that you do, is there any current driver on the Cup Series that you could compare yourself to? Current driver. Let's see. You know, I'd love to say Larson because he's freaking dominant everywhere he goes, you know, and then behind that, you know, Kyle Busch has a lot of haters, but some gun never gives up he can drive anything. Uh, you know, I don't, hmm. I'm going to say I want to be a Larson. Or I say Elliot. Well, let's go with Elliot. Elliot, Elliot lays back, he, you know, but he, he doesn't really put himself in bad predicaments. And that's probably my, that's probably what I try to do the most. You know, because I, I grew up, I, I was racing many mods when Chase Elliott was running montgomery out there and winning 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 races and i was why i was running the same track and i'd come out there and i'd see bill and chase be like 14 years old 15 and we dominating everybody but he's so methodical about what he does and he puts himself in good predicaments where he can win and i think that matters the most man i really do i think you try to try to keep yourself out of bad predicaments if you can it saves the car because we all know what it costs to run nowadays you know so i think that matters the most man. If, you can, if you can do that and get yourself in position to win then win so I, if i could be what I'd want to be, I'd say Elliot. You're just saying that because you're both named Chase. Well, we can do that too. <laughs> Chase, Chase.